And the good thing about when they race at Daytona are the odds. Nobody's four to one, five to one, three to one. The lowest you might get is seven, eight to one, depending on how, how they look in practice and qualifying and all that other jazz. Uh, let's start just breaking down a, a couple of uh, uh, track trends and things that like, uh, like that, like we always do. So only three of the last 13 winners started inside the top 10. And that included uh, starting positions of 31st by Stenhouse and 34th by Haley. Uh, no winner has started in the top two rows in the last 17 races. Wow. So qualifying. Well, look, look, we know qualifying doesn't matter very much, but still, you would think on accident someone would be starting in the top four <laughs> in the last 17 and win. No pole sitter. Do you, know, do, do you happen to know the last uh, driver who uh, won a Daytona race from the pole? I'm going to guess it's the guy we were just listening to. <laughs> yeah. Back in 2015, the Coke 400, Dale yeah. Jr., the last pole sitter winner at the tournament. The last four winners, their average starting position is 20.2. Mm. So, uh, uh, and as far as manufacturers, no Toyota in the last eight. Denny Hammond was the last to do it back in 2020 in the Daytona 500. Ford's won four of the last she uh, seven. Chevy's won three of the last four. Chevy, uh, and, and this is only for your Xfinity gamblers out there. If you like to bet on Xfinity, uh, keep this in mind. Chevy has won 13 of the last 14 races at, the, at Daytona in the Xfinity Series, including six straight. And, and, and Toyota's not only bad in the uh, Cup Series, they're bad in the Xfinity Series. They haven't won a race since 2013. So I don't think Toyota is the way to go this week. We said that last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Remember, don't chase. Uh, don't chase. You just you, you accept it. You go, okay, it's fine. You just stay the course because uh, the odds are with you. But, yeah, that would be crazy if a Toyota driver won this week too. All right, so uh, William Byron won the Daytona 500 this year in a Chevy, even though he only led four laps. Matter of fact, Chevy had four of the top six drivers. Toyota had four of the top eight. No Fords in the top eight. But, this is important for the Fords. Logano was the top lap leader with 45 laps before he crashed. And if you take a look at the Geico 500, the Talladega race, a Toyota driver did win. That was Redick. But it was the only Toyota in the top ten. And... John Hunter Nemechek, he led 20 laps, which was one of the better ones, another Toyota, but he finished 33rd. Ford, on the other hand, had two of the top three, including McDowell, who was the top lap leader at Talladega with 36 before he crashed. Logano was second most with 22. So I know Logano should be a tip-off of how, how, how much I think about him this week, Um but that's interesting, and again, I think that should not be surprising that four drivers uh, are, are a pretty good bet this week. But anyway, what do you think about all those uh, interesting historical stats? Not surprising. I mean, Toyota's been really good, but their car hasn't been the best at linking up. So that's been some of their problems of recent seasons. Chevrolet's been fantastic by themselves. Uh, they've been able to race well, uh, but for whatever reason, they kind of lose that handling in the draft, uh, lose a little bit of the edge that they have in single car qualifying. So they're often able to lock out the front row, uh, but not as frequently able to make it all the way to victory lane. Uh, whereas the Fords, they just concentrate on that race handling. They're able to link up. They work well together. Remember, these are the races where the pit strategies uh coalesce uh, by the manufacturer. So all the Fords will tend to come down to pit road at the same time. All the Chevrolets will come down to pit road at the same time. Same with Toyota and Ford just with a smaller contingent, more tightly knit. They've just got a better way of, uh, you know, making their team get out front and hold it off and hold off the pack. And that's why you had Joey Logano lead so many laps uh, with the Starting position trends, though, we have started to see more of the crashes come from the front and pushing around the front. And that came typically with the stage breaks and the 
increase of aggression as you approach uh, those, you know, positioning for those stage points. Uh, it wasn't too long ago in years past where those crashes would break out in the middle. So you'd either want to be out front or you'd want to be at the back. Now, uh, being out front doesn't necessarily guarantee you're not going to be in that crash because, they've, as I've said, they tend to happen more at the front as people are jockeying for the lead and for those stage points. Yeah, you bring up also um, a good point regarding green flag pit stop racing because that's, to me... I think, I mean, obviously, you don't, getting into a wreck, potluck, the biggest issue. But the second biggest issue for good drivers are the green flag pit stops mm -hmm. because it can completely ruin where you end up and you may never recover. And yeah. it's not like it was 15 years ago where you can go from 30th to first in a lap. Uh, you, you get screwed up. Even with 30, 40 laps to go and then everybody's in, in their lines, you're, 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 you're pretty screwed. So Yeah, that's a good point, too. The, the competition now with the current package is very tight. And, and you're, you used to be able to make a dive bomb and, and pick up a couple of cars. You, you used to be able to have the where did he come froms. Uh, on the last couple of laps, and you can't do that. You've got to be in position, you know, 30 plus laps prior to uh, the end of the stage or end of the race, because you're only able, if you're lucky, to make one car passes at a time. Uh, it's much more challenging to move through the field now. Okay, so here are the top four Hamlin, Busher, Kozlowski, and Kyle Bush. Let me see if someone else is 12 to 1. Nope. Okay. Well, wait a second. Where's Denny? Ha Where's Ryan Blaney? Okay. Anyway, so <laughs> Ham yeah, again. Hamlin, Busher, Kislowski stay the same that I saw earlier, and Kyle um, has made just a little move up. All right. So out of this group here, I you know I wouldn't go with Hamlin myself because uh, we've talked about this, and and that is that. Uh, you get drivers in these uh, Daytona Talladega races where they can go on little streaks. They're hot, they're they're cold, they're getting in all sorts of bad luck, whatever. And how much just happens to be now? It may not be a bad streak. It could just be that all of a sudden with the next gen car, it's not the same because Denny Hamlin in his last five, not maybe a coincidence, maybe not. Since the next gen, he does not have a top fifteen at. Daytona. So I think that's important um, because, look, you, you just don't want to use this race. Even though you're getting good odds, you don't really want to use this race for the drivers that you would normally look at and respect on a weekly basis. Denny Hamlin being one of them. I still, you would take Denny because he was really good at, and he still is, really, he deserves to be the favorite. But I think based on that little number he's going through it's like an excuse for me to go all right i'll kind of pass on him uh this week but busher and kozlowski you've got the defending champ you also have the second uh place finisher so this is how it went last year one two busher kozlowski big surprise you know one pushing the other but if you look at busher he only led two laps in the race and he was 18th into 500 this year last year he was fourth in the 500 led 32 laps won the coke race leading two Kozlowski, uh, with the next gen, has led 118 laps combined, including a second place finish and a ninth place finish. And the other three results were two crashes and a DVP. So that's, those are good signs for the Kozlowski Busher tandem. You know, I might favor Kozlowski just a little bit, but keep in mind, he's only has one top five since his 2016 win. That was in this race last year when he finished second. But here's another key of why. In his last 15 races, he's had 10 wrecks and a DVP. So if he can avoid it, uh, Kozlowski will be there at the end. And so I know they're a little bit more, uh, especially with Busher, needing to get a win. If he's in contention, uh, you know Kozlowski is going to do what he can to push Busher to the winner's circle. So I think taking both of them may not be a bad idea, but I'd probably favor Busher just a little bit because he needs it more. That's an interesting point. I was going to favor Kozlowski a little bit more because if he's able to avoid the crashes, he's almost always in the top 10. 
Uh, I think taking them as a tandem is probably the wise bet because, like I said, you, they're going to be coming to pit road. They're going to be doing similar strategies. They are going to link up. Racing at Talladega and Daytona now is more of a team sport, and Busher and Keselowski certainly know how to play as good teammates, as evidenced by their finish here last year. Uh, so I'd probably give Keselowski the edge just a little bit over the two uh, if you're just choosing one, but I would actually recommend taking both. Kyle Busch, the reason he's up there is because Richard Childress Racing fields fantastic super speedway cars. Uh, so he and Austin Dillon, <clears throat> that team ever since Dale Earnhardt has just known how to put it together at these tracks, whether they've sucked on every other track in the schedule, it doesn't matter. These two tracks they get, and that's why Kyle Busch is up there. And I think he might actually be a pretty decent play. I don't know if I like him as much as where he is in comparison to others right now, but 12 to one for Kyle Busch in a Richard Childress racing car at Daytona is probably not a bad bet overall. And, and they're all coming off uh, good finishes. Uh, Kyle was fourth, Kozlowski was fifth, and Busher was sixth on Monday. And yeah, Kyle was 14 to one earlier this morning. And I really liked that, even though it's not a big difference. But I was like, you know what? How important it is. He needs a win. Uh, he's, he's starting to, the, the team is, is, is making some moves here. Uh, yeah. And he's only got one win at Talladega, 38 races. So that's not very good. But in the next gen, his average is 10.8, which is not bad. So. That's really good. All right. Uh, now let's move on over to the next uh, group of four. And we've got all four teams. Elliot, Waltz, Byron, Blaney. And uh, I, uh, this out of this group, uh, believe it or not, I, I, I'd probably go with Wallace. Um, uh, but Byron, would, would again, just out of this group, Byron would also be um, a contender. And I say that only because for Blaney, what I do like with Blaney is he's 14 to 1. So I think that's a bargain, and I and 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 I would take him for that reason. I, I'm surprised it's 14 to one. Um, the thing I am concerned with a little bit though is he has wrecked the last two. I know it's not his fault, but he was involved in wrecks the last two at Daytona, and he's no longer on that hot streak which ended at the break. So he's come out of the break, and he hasn't had a top ten in the two races out of the break. So that combination is like, well, you know, I, I don't know. But at 14-1, to 1, I, I think he's a definite play because of we just know he's one of the best uh, at super speedways. Um, but regarding the others, Elliott, I, I would I would pass on Elliott. He's never won here. Uh, but again, Byron uh, coming off a second-place finish on Monday, uh, won the race earlier this year and was fourth in this race, eighth in this race last year. But the problem is – is he won earlier this year and expecting him to win both races at a pot luck track is those odds need to be higher probably than 14 to one for me. So Wallace uh, is actually my top play out of this group. He has three runner up finishes in his career of 14 races. He has an average of 10.8 over the last six cup races. And he has an average of 10.3 over his last six at Daytona, including fifth in the 500 and we know just said the same thing about Busher. We know how important uh, this would be for Bubba to pick up his first Daytona win. Yeah, I don't disagree with you one bit. I think Wallace is the one of this group, certainly, to, to take probably Blaney second, and then Byron and Elliott maybe an equal third in that pack. Chase Elliott, um, he, he's been... You know, it, maybe it depends on where he qualifies. If he's not inside the top 10 qualifying, he usually finishes inside the top 10 here at Daytona. If he qualifies um, at the front, he usually doesn't finish at the front. So maybe look for him. If you're if you're thinking of going the Elliott route, maybe look and see where he ends up qualifying, see if he focuses on his race car versus the qualifying machine. Wallace, much more consistent, though, just out of the last one, two, three, four, five, six races at Daytona, he's only got... All of them were top 20s, uh, which is kind of hard to do at a super speedway track. And just one of them was 20. The rest of them were 12th or better. And uh, three of them were top five. So Wall is very consistent. He knows how to race all the way to the finish at this track. And I, I think we've seen it a couple times. All he needs, and he would have a victory by now at one of these tracks, whether it be Talladega or Daytona, if he just had the luck to, or, and made the right move coming off of that last turn. He'd been in position multiple times. No reason why he wouldn't be in position again at the end of Saturday night. 
Yeah, the thing, I, of course, the biggest thing that I'd be concerned with is the fact that he's driving a Toyota. So that would be the biggest concern. Uh, but it's 14 to 1, and he is a desperate driver. And, and, and you know, I, I wouldn't say don't take any Toyota drivers. We just, you know, saw what happened on Monday. Uh, but just make sure that, uh, you know, you pick and choose, and hopefully you get the right ones. Okay, um, moving on. Let's go down to this next group. Okay. Now, here's the biggest bargain so far. He's still 14 to 1. But that's yeah. Joey Logano. So, we just talked... We, to, we just don't talk, even need to ask who I'm taking of this group. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is easy. So, Logano has only won once, believe it or not. Uh, and uh, that was back in 2015. Uh, but... And, and by the way, he's only led one lap... Uh, no, this is a, I, let's hold this because this is actually a positive, but let's keep in mind that he uh, he's been very inconsistent this year, and that's maybe being kind. Uh, if you just take a look at his results, they, they've been really he's had a lot of bad bad results. Uh, he's very fortunate he's got the win. Um, I'm not sure where he'd be right now. I mean, what do you think? Would he be like what Busher is? Would he be or, or, or like Truex is if if he had no win? So Logano's know got that? 561 points. He would be behind Wallace and Chastain, just ahead of Kyle Busch. So he'd be really in trouble. He would be in trouble. Okay. But now all the positives. Uh, he's led at least one lap or more in his last 11 Daytona races, including six or more in 10 of the last 11. Uh, it, it, he crashed this year, as we mentioned, but... He led 45 laps, which was the most from the pole. Last year, second in the 500, led 12 laps. Fifth in this race last year, leading nine laps. Nobody has these types of stats as far as lately and career-wise, the combination that Joey Logano has. And you're getting 14 to 1. So, Yeah, I... Uh Logano's in my mind a must play this week whether it's these odds or in fantasy uh, he's just been so consistently quick at Daytona like you said leading laps and in all the way back to 2019 uh, at least one lap in every single race that he's been in at Daytona clearly the star among this bunch second and fifth before and then uh, in in the two races last year and then ended up uh, on pole uh, in February, but wasn't able to finish. Did lead the 45 laps, like you said, though. Uh, so Logano, the clear standout here. Uh, Larson, Reddick going back to back. He's very easy. Going to be very tough to go back to back. So I'd probably give the edge to Wallace again there. Uh, his teammate Kyle Larson, uh, similar to uh, Elliot and Byron, like we talked about before, very good in the single lap. Uh, just doesn't have the luck to be able to get all the way through to the end of the race. Uh, Christopher Bell might be another Toyota to consider alongside Wallace, though. Um, Christopher Bell has just been racing really well. Unfortunately, didn't have the luck yesterday at Michigan, uh, but he's been racing really well this whole season. I think he's going to be very strong as he continues to build that peak up to the playoffs. Yeah, remember, we have uh, one of our handicapping rules is uh, unless it's a bargain of bargains, we do not take drivers coming off a win. And uh, and that's held true 100 percent of the time this year. So even if you even if it happens once this year, you're 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 you're, you're doing well, you're doing well for yourself. Um, and so far, it hasn't bit us. But yeah, so that, that that's going to take Redick out of it. And uh, even though he has six wrecks out of 10 anyway, but. Uh, and he's driving a Toyota. But the other thing is, check this Bell-Larson comparison out. You have... Uh, Larson was 34th on Monday. That's the fifth time he's been in the 30s this year. Bell was 35th on Monday. That was the eighth time Christopher Bell has been in the 30s this year. That's crazy. Um, but Bell, if you're taking one of the two, you're definitely going with Bell over Larson... He was third and led 22 laps this year. Third in the 500, led 20 laps last year. And Larson, look, how many times do we have to, as you kind of mentioned, I mean, look, I mean, if you've watched this show long enough, you know we would never take Kyle Larson, or at least at this point in time, he's done nothing to uh, convince us that we should ever take Kyle Larson at Talladega or Daytona, in which he has never 
one. Matter of fact, he does not have a top five no. in 20 career races at Daytona. I'm not even sure if he has a top five at Talladega. I was just going to say no top fives despite starting on the pole or the front row four consecutive times between 2021 and 2023. Doesn't even lead that many laps through 20 starts, just 31 laps led, especially considering that's terrible, especially considering three poles in a row as well as a second place start. Okay, now here's the next group, all around 20 to 22. Uh, Truex is driving a Toyota, so and he's got no top fives in his last 12 on the season. Uh, even though he has driven a little bit better lately at Daytona and Talladega, so, uh, and, and, and it was always surprising to us why he never was better here, but that's just not good enough. So, okay, he's out. Uh, Bowman, though, even though his last three results here are not very uh, last, excuse me, last three results on the season have not been very good. He was second at the 500 this year, and in his last three overall, second, sixth, and fifth. So that's pretty good at Daytona in his last three. He also has three career poles in 16 races. So I like Bowman as a long shot. Gibbs, forget it. He's driving a Toyota. He hasn't shown anything here either in the Xfinity Series or the Cup. And Chastain might be interesting. We know how desperate he is in getting a victory. And he hasn't been all that bad lately. He doesn't have a great, great career record here. But he led 14 laps this year in the 500. Last year, he led six laps, finished ninth, and led 19 laps and finished 17th. So he's led at least six laps in his last three Daytona appearances. He does have an Xfinity win. Never had a top five, though, but he's a long shot. So I'd probably take Bowman over Chastain in this group as a long shot, but Chastain is more desperate. So um, I don't know, but but those are the two I would consider. Yeah, I would not take Gibbs or Truex. Um, Truex can't buy a break for anything. Uh, Gibbs, four races, hasn't done much. Just a couple of top 15s, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Alex Bowman, really good and, 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 and consistently in the top five recently. So that's definitely something to look at from him. Uh, Ross Chastain, I think, is going to be feast or famine. Either he's going to hit it and be up at the front or he's going to be at the back and you're not going to hear from him all day. And I'm not sure what that's going to be based on his history here. What I do like about Chastain and why I'd give him the edge over Truex and Gibbs, though, really is the lap sleds three uh the last three stops at daytona he's led six 19 and 14 laps so that shows that he's able to get to the front but the fish finishes just haven't been consistent just one top 10 from that uh, so again I, it's probably going to be feast or famine for chastain i think bowman's your more um more concrete uh long shot bet here of this group i yeah i kind of get the feeling that chastain it's like not only feast or famine here, but sort of the Lex two races that it's like, mm -hmm. he's either going to turn his season around or it's just going to be over. Yep. I could see that as well. Yeah. So we'll see, but at least it's a long shot number. All right. Still have some, uh, long shots here. Of course, uh, not super long shots. You don't get a whole lot of them at Daytona, but you got McDowell, uh, 22. Of course, he's the, t the, the 2021 Daytona 500 champ. As silly as that sounds, you have another Daytona 500 champ. As silly as this sounds, Austin Sindrick, he won it in 2022. So these, they went back to back years, obviously. Um, so they've already won it Daytona once. Um, but McDowell, you know, he's more desperate. Sindrick is in, McDowell isn't. So, you know, McDowell is not a not the worst idea. Matter of fact, we, we talked about. Uh, the, that lap uh, deal with McDowell um, leading 36 laps at Talladega, I believe, earlier this year. Then you have Stenhouse and Dillon. Now, Dillon looks like he's on the outs, but, I mean, look, he could, he's going to be with Kyle. Uh, Kyle's 12 now. Dillon's 30. Uh, so if they're together, if they're lucky to avoid crashes, um, you know, it's just going to defend who's first. Nobody's going to give the other. You know, Dylan needs it just like Kyle. So maybe if Dylan ends up first ahead and Kyle's got to push him, Dylan's got two wins at Daytona in this race, I believe. Um, 
Problem is, he's been really bad in his last three races at Daytona. But again, we're just it's thirty to one. Stenhouse might be another play at th at twenty eight to one because he has a pair of uh, wins. <laughs> Matter of fact, this is funny. McDowell twenty one, Sindrick twenty two, and Stenhouse twenty three. Those are before this year your last three. Daytona 500 champions. But anyway, uh, Stenhouse, uh, if you look at him, uh, he has not had some luck lately. Four out of his last five have been wrecks, but one of those was a win, the 500. So, I mean, uh, Sindrick out, but the other three are not bad long shot plays. I, and I might actually throw a couple of bucks on Stenhouse and Dylan. I would probably take all four of these guys over the last four that we talked about, to be honest with you. I think any one of them <clears throat> has the potential to win. They've all won. Dylan, as a matter of fact, might stand out the most just because he's won both the Daytona 500 as well as this fall race, plus the fact that he's won in the new car and he's won in the old car. And again, that just goes to Richard Childress Racing and their ability to field fast cars at Daytona and Talladega. Uh, so I think with the momentum that we've seen from the Richard Childress Racing teammates over the past couple of weeks, I think Dylan stands out to me. But again, I, I wouldn't hesitate taking all four over the last four that we just talked about. I think any one of these guys, you know, Daytona is a gamble. Talladega is a gamble. You got to go with the long shots. These guys have proven that they can get it done. They might get caught up in a crash, but they've just as easily could win as well. <laughs> yep. All right. And then we go to Jones, Briscoe, Gregson, and LaJoy, about 35 to 40 to one group. Uh, Gregson was ninth earlier this year, led five laps. Uh, also, I believe he has, let's see, an, uh, he has one top five out of four in cup, two top tens. So that's a nice percentage. Also has a win in the Xfinity Series out of eight tries. So Gregson's another nice little long shot possibility. Jones is driving a Toyota. He does have a win at Daytona. He's driving a Toyota, though, so I'm, I'm not really uh, I'm probably going to uh, skip him. Uh, LaJoy, though, uh, we know he's, uh, if you're ever going to take him, these are the races to take him at. He was fourth in the 500 this year. He's got a 13.4 average in his last 10 races at Daytona. That's pretty impressive, so I think he's worth you know a buck or two. And then uh, Briscoe. Uh, is actually uh, another driver that I think you have to consider at 35 to 1. Uh, if you take a look at Briscoe, who was 10th in the 500 this year, he was on the pole in this race last year and led 67 laps. That is a lot uh, before uh, he ended up in a crash. Um, so, I, and he was 10th, as I mentioned. So, his last two races at Daytona have been pretty good for Briscoe. So, yeah, I mean, I can hear you saying, I. I, I you know, you go with all four of these again, just like the other four, because you, you might be able to do that. Um, but I'll eliminate Jones because he's driving a Toyota. Um, other than that, I think the other guys have better at least stats that I'm not going to worry about. I wouldn't care what manufacturer they were. So who do you like out of this group? Number one. Uh, honestly, I probably like Noah Gregson top uh, Corey LaJoy, very close second Corey LaJoy just, he's got a knack for getting to the end and he almost always finishes inside the top 15 here. And that's where you got to be to be able to be in position for the win. So he just needs a couple of lucky breaks uh, was on his roof yesterday. So we'll see how he recovers from that. Uh, Noah Gregson, I think though he's uh, from his, his Xfinity days. So seem to have carried over right into this series as well. And I think it'd be really cool to see him up at the front again. So uh, heart says Gregson brain probably says LaJoy. Um, so that's how I'll rank them. All right. And then we move on uh, to Gil Lance Suarez, Van Gisbergen, and Priest. Uh, and then you also have the rest Berry, Hostovar, Burton, Hamrick, Hunter Nemechek. Uh, there's Haley, a winner of Daytona. You got Zane Smith, Austin Hill. Okay. So out of, out of the rest of that group, the ones that uh, stick out to me. Uh, I, I actually, I think there's only what one or two of them that stick out. One, yeah, one. Actually, you know what? I'll probably throw a buck each on Hill and Smith, uh, because uh, Hill, even though his two cup results aren't that good, that was back in 2020. So since 
20, I guess it was 2022, he's got three Xfinity wins in six Daytona races. Um, and so that's real important to note that all of that happened after he raced here twice in the Cup Series. So he does not have a Cup Series, which I, I'm just shocked at. I don't know why it's taken anybody this long to put him in a Cup race over the last couple of years. But I think he's a no-brainer at that number. And Zane Smith's got it, the last two uh, appearances for Zane Smith in the Truck Series. He's won this race. Um, mm-hmm. I know it's a truck, but it, it is worth something. And he was seventh on Monday. Uh, so that's got to give him some, you know, feeling good about that. And then in two cup races, he's finished 13th in both, which is not all that bad. So yeah, out of that group, I, I throw a buck each on those drives on those uh, two drivers. Yeah. And we just talked about, uh, his teammate Zane Smith as well, being able to find his way to the finish. So I completely agree. Austin Hill is just a spectacular super speedway racer. So I think he's one that could pull off a huge surprise. Uh, same thing with Zane. Thing. both of them extremely good um you know smith with the team as well on his side i think both of those are excellent long shots without question and by the way daniel suarez has three straight top tens in the cup series and not, he's awful in daytona he's got 10 wrecks out of 14 awful but keep we'll keep an eye on him uh because if he doesn't wreck that would be a sign that his momentum is still going and if he finishes well at Darlington with a top 10 or something, then I don't know. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's I'm sure his teammate would like to be doing better. But interesting that uh, I'm not sure he's ever had three straight top 10s, to tell you the truth, in his career. <laughs> Probably not. Okay. What are your picks going to be? Oh, my goodness. Um, Potluck. Um, <laughs> uh, so my top pick is we'll go with Keselowski as a top pick. Okay. My middle uh, Logano, and then I'll go. Um, man, it's going to be Lajoy Hill or Smith for the long shot. Let's go Zane Smith for the long shot. Okay, very cool. All right. Uh, since you took Logano, again, he'll be a no-brainer, but since you took him, I'll do Busher. I will do... I'll do Chastain. Why not? Mm-hmm. And then... I'll also... I'll do uh, Dylan. And if I and if I wanted to do a, a long shot, again, I, I, Austin Hill. I mean... Is, is is also kind of a no-brainer so so that's kind of you know matter of fact since this is a daytona race we'll, we'll, we'll give each uh, each of us an extra driver so we'll, we'll give you lajoy and, and zane smith that and, works. and i'll go dylan and hill Th- those are my other two long shots so we'll see if we can cash in and again don't forget to check it out on friday this week when uh, we recap, I'm not sure what the weather is. I guess we should check and see if uh, what the weather forecast is. Hopefully, uh, the weather's going to be okay. And we will be on Prime Sports Network with our starting lineup video of qualifying and practice update. Take a look. Uh, again, we're probably not going to have any odds to talk about. But we'll uh, let you know uh, what it looks like. Look, I and the thing is, is Daytona. So it's, it's just not really a big deal. But we'll report it. And let you know what we uh, if we see anything interesting.